Ah yes, eBay yields the goodies once again, and this time it's a treat especial, as Eve would say. It is something very special indeed. So I'll get straight to the point here. I'll plug this in. Here's a little UK compliant adapter with a fuse. I'll plug this non-polarized plug in, and this is a device with a nice digital readout, and it beeps. And it was described as... LED quick test light box, voltage power tester for E27, B22, E14, lamp bulb with buzzer. It does have a buzzer. You can hear the buzzer going beep. And this thing is used for testing lamps. Let me demonstrate. You turn the power on and you can just shove lamps in. And the high number of beeps there meant that it was out of compliance. Because when you plug in a lamp that you've programmed it for, like this little one here, it does a wee couple of beeps, and it shows you it's 1.75 watts. If you press the button briefly, it shows you the mains voltage, which is currently apparently 246 volts. Not sure how accurate that is. But if you set it to that, and then you press and hold the button, you can go through 5, I think it's 5% tolerance, 10% tolerance, 15% tolerance. You can set the tolerance so that when you put another lamp in it, it will, depending on the base, it doesn't matter on parallel, it will measure the power, and if it is within the rated power range, it'll make a double beep. Sometimes it does the multiple beeps and then does the double beep. But the idea is you can quickly just uh, put lamps in and you can test to see if they're compliant or not, and also test them. So very handy for testing lamps. You don't have to use that sort of continuity tester thing. You've also got a couple of uh, loudspeaker terminals here that also put out 240 volts. You've got a little socket here that puts out 240 volts. And when it said continuity test or sort of thing or beeper, I thought this was just going to be a continuity test. No, no, it's not. Because when you have a lamp like this, a little LED module like this that you need to test and it operates at 240, then you need, and I'll turn it off for this, you need the special probes that come with it. In goes the first probe. In goes the second probe. We have our probes, said Clive, handling them gingerly. Notice not shrouded tips, not uh, finger guards or anything. Turn the power on. And it doesn't really matter the polarity here. Just probe directly onto the circuit board. And the LED works. You can test it. But what do you do with the probes? You have to turn the power off because these probes are live at 240 volts. Lovely. That's excellent. That's... Perfect. And these things are actually used in China in factories. I've seen videos showing the little mama, papa type lamp shops where someone's just started up their own company and they've basically just bought like things like circuit boards and housings and they assemble the lamps themselves and then they've Sometimes not. it's not even like this. They've got a couple of nails on the bench and she stuffs the lamp. It's always a woman doing it. She stuffs the lamp across the nails to see if it lights up. It's, it's very good. I don't think they really comply with local regulations. But anyway, let's open it up. It needs the California warning sticker. I've had this open already. I just had to see what was inside it. That's why I've uh, invalidated my warranty on the certificate of say, it, this product has passed the test. Excellent. It's not past my test. I mean, it works. Noting that because it's not polarised, uh, if you're actually pushing the lamps in, this may be live or it may be neutral. Exciting. I'm guessing these things, it looks like they're almost for a strap. But I think they're for screwing it down to the bench because they really do genuinely uh, have a fairly slack approach to electricity in China. I think they work on the basis that uh, use common sense and if you get a shock, you get a shock. And if you die, you die and they're just going to have to employ somebody else. There is that attitude towards labour in China. It's very odd. It doesn't happen here. Maybe they're a bit too soft here. Maybe we need more test equipment like this. Right. A lot of screws. Maybe I should have taken some out beforehand or even paused, but I didn't. Lovely construction. Gives me... What's that uh, game that they got to catch them all, Pokemon? It's got that two-tone colour to it. So inside is the little circuit board. I'll put it up this way. And we've got the cable coming in. The, the neutral has just popped off. Okay. The neutral's popped off. That's okay. I think it came from down there. Uh, but live is looks as though it's going out via the shunt here. Let's zoom down this. And maybe brighten the image up because it is just a bit uh, 
It's, it's not going to brighten up. One moment, please. It has brightened up. Quirky. So inside we've got a, a little current shunt and what looks probably like an op-amp. I'm going to guess that's an op-amp or a dedicated current monitoring device. Let me just see if there's a number on it. Oh, is it even? It does look like it's connected to that. 2121AYH. Don't immediately recognise. BL, wait. Oh, nine, I'm not sure what that is. That's strange. Anyway, then to the little microcontroller, and over here, there is a little buck regulator based on a um, SM7035P buck regulator chip. There's the inductor, there's the output capacitor for the power supply, and what it's doing is it's measuring the uh, voltage drop across this current shunt uh, and using it to... Uh, Probably buffering it up with this chip here, I would guess. I'll double check what that is, see if I can find any information on it. But then it's uh, pre presenting it as an analog signal to the microcontroller, which will then just basically then multiplex the LEDs crudely. They've used the minimum of components possible here. It's very cheap, which means that the segments are all different intensities and just display the value. I suppose it's quite useful. It means they don't have to look up if you can basically calibrate it for that and then just stuff lamps in. But here, uh, the... Uh, the fuse is in the neutral. I suppose it's better that the, you, it doesn't help if you poke the probe onto a grounded metalwork, does it? But they've got the fuse on what appears to be the neutral. Am I right here? No, actually, I'm talking crap. The fuse is actually in the live. This is good. Uh, and then it just goes in parallel to the speaker connectors, your output probes, your little socket, and then all the lamp holders. Mm, little... George Michael, there are careless whiskers sticking out. Also notable that it looks a bit mashed down here because when I first opened it up, this wire was right across here and it had been mashed during manufacture, so that passed its inspection. Also a little, uh, oh, the vent holes are for the audio, I guess. But that is it. Uh, this is going to be super swamped out, isn't it? Yes, it's going to be kind of swamped out. Better. Uh, but that is it. It is uh, quite handy in the right environment, but I don't think it would really be compliant with uh, American, European, British, or any other regulations. Maybe in India, as well as China, they might allow such things, but uh, it's definitely not the probes. I mean, the probes are it. It doesn't matter you can poke your fingers in these because you can poke your fingers in lamp holders anyway, but it's the fact that the speaker terminals are not compliant. The probes are just ridiculous, but hilarious at the same time. That make it kind of special and that as i say might be okay in china and india but it's not really too acceptable anywhere else